Let's bring in Kimberly Whaley, a professor at the University of Baltimore School of Law and ABC News contributor. Kim, thank you for joining us tonight. What is your takeaway from the prosecution's questioning today? Well, they got to what we expected, which is essentially to paint her as not just a, reg a negligent mother, but a recklessly negligent, grossly negligent mother to the point where she caused these deaths. Stephanie, that's the big thing here. This is not a, just about child neglect. This is, is she responsible for those four uh, murders, really, by her son? That but for her actions, those people would still be alive today. That's a big stretch, frankly, for the prosecution, which makes this such a landmark case across the country when we're all reeling uh, and numb, frankly, from such a scourge of gun violence over the years. Certainly are. Now, this case is in the jury's hands now. What will they need to consider? Well, again, the standards beyond a reasonable doubt, we're talking about liberty here. We're talking about someone going to jail for many, many years. And so they're going to have to say, uh, ask themselves, as the defense said, is this something the mother could have prevented? Teenagers can be difficult. You know, she was doing her best. Maybe not the best mother ever, um, but was she so negligent that she should be put in prison for these deaths? Uh, and I think for the defense, they have to worry that the jury's just not sympathetic to her and they could say, you know, she, he shouldn't have a gun. You should have gotten him some mental health support. And when she testified that in hindsight, she wouldn't have done anything differently, I, you know, I think that that maybe raised, could have raised some questions in the juror's mind as to whether that's realistic when there are four people, again, children, that are, that are dead. And Kim, what about the father? His trial is set for March. Could his trial kind of play out the same way? Sure. I think part of the defense here was to point to the father as the one responsible for the guns. Now, just to be clear, you know, nothing here is illegal about the guns. He legally owned the gun. Uh, the family owned the gun. There wasn't any uh, allegations here that under Michigan law, uh, they violated the law. And so the bigger question for both of these defendants is really, should it be parents that are held responsible for this problem? Or it should be the legislators who don't put in place uh, protections for the public but she's going you know the defense in the second trial for the dad is going to have to get over this idea that he was um, encouraging or negligent around giving him the gun training him on the gun making sure he didn't abuse the gun knowing that this kid was in some level of crisis because as a prosecutor and prosecution demonstrated it was all over his personal notebooks and the school was concerned that he was going to take some some serious action but we've seen this before again uh, Stephanie we've seen this before so this is a watershed moment it's a liability now going to be shifting to parents to control uh, their children when we're awash in guns in this country all right Kim we'll see what happens whatever the verdict is this is certainly setting a precedent thank you so much for your time thank you Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.